This episode was brought to you by the Secret Society of Adored Women. Have you been tirelessly going on craptastic dates, having craptastic results with men, even spending a craptastic amount of time weeding through meh guys and fretting over the one who won't call you back or commit? Join us for our hush hush group of like minded, successful, badass single women from around the world turning the dating scene on its head and creating scandalously magical romantic experiences that you will cherish forevermore. But beware, your love life and life will never be the same again. Meet us over at thesecretsocietyofadoredwomen.com. You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen. And Jen. Letting it all hang out for your love life. Examining your dating experiences and answering your hot topic dating questions. Just you and us, Jen Squared. No topic is off limits and no filters involved. We are here to help you do dating on your terms. If you have a question you would like us to answer or would like to immediately upgrade your love life with our collection of classes and exclusive merchandise, meet us over now at singlesmartfemale.com. Hey there, my single smart female. It is Jen, your romantic fairy godmama, coming to you today with a single smart female listener question. This question comes from Miss I Want to Fall in Love Again in Ohio. And Miss I Want to Fall in Love Again, by the way, normally we answer questions from our older single, smart females. But I thought that this was a particularly interesting question. This comes from Miss I Want to Fall in Love Again is age 22. So she writes, Dear Jen, I just want to start start off by saying thank you. I've listened to almost every single one of your podcasts and took your three-day Mantourage dating course. The free one at mantouragedating.com. By the way, thank you for saying that. She says, I love it. I appreciate that you have these free opportunities. I had one of the most amazing dates of my life last night. And to be clear, I've only had three boyfriends and one of them became my husband of four years. I was a mom at 17 and I am killing it. Congratulations. That's awesome. I feel as if I've never been treated properly by a man. And every single man I have been with did not respect my boundaries and always wanted to have sex right away. I'm also working on my boundaries, thanks to you. For the first time in my life, I felt genuinely liked on this date. This is a guy I've known since I was seven, and he came out of nowhere. I've known that he's liked me for years, but I never really gave him a chance. We went to every school together, and we always had similar friend groups, but never really hung out. I let him take me out to do a fun activity, and we we had a great time. And then last night, we went out to eat for dinner and walked back to my place. He was genuinely interested in me and asked me tons of questions to my surprise, even though I spent the whole day telling myself I wouldn't be an emotional shitbag. I did a good job and didn't share more than I needed to thanks to your advice. We played games together and talked and had a gunfight with one of my son's Nerf guns and we played guitar a little bit. We finished the night off with a kiss and he told me I looked beautiful and then he left. The reason it was so amazing is because he showed interest. He was calm and confident and sexy. He was a total gentleman. Not a single time did I feel like he was trying to get me in bed even though I know that he would want to. This is the most respected and feminine I have ever felt. I could fall in love already. My question, even after two dates, how can I know he's a keeper? How can I not fuck this up? I want to take things slow, and I'm definitely not ready for sex with anyone until I learn about myself and feel confident again because sex was introduced to me at a young age in a very negative way. I want to fall in love with myself and I'm doing a great job. I do think I'm ready to build a long-lasting relationship with someone. I'm still learning, but I'm ready. I've been mantourage dating for only two months now, and this man came out of nowhere, and I'm super excited to see where this goes, but I don't want to obsess because I still want to get to know him better. How do I take things slow 
What do I tell him? And should I say what I feel or hold back? Okay. This great questions, miss. I want to fall in love again. So let me start with the first thing I want to mention. You nor any other single smart female is an emotional shitbag. Okay. I want to make it clear, and I know I've talked about this in other podcasts, is that because you have feelings and emotions and things like that, that doesn't make you an emotional shitbag. Now, I do think sometimes we come from a place of such insecurity that we think sometimes when we first are getting to know someone, if we disclose every horrible thing that we think about ourselves or any situation we've ever been through, that somehow then if he still picks us after that, that that's a good thing. And what I'm telling you is that all of your baggage, if you allow things to unfold, will not matter. So plus, he hasn't earned, just because he goes on one or two dates with you, he hasn't earned the right to know everything quite yet. So think of it as like the most beautiful belly dance or beautiful burlesque show. When you go into a burlesque show, if they walk in and reveal everything, if they just go nude or go down to to very little and don't use the veil or different props as an art form of seduction, it's boring. And when we're doing a journey with somebody and dating is part of that journey, it is really a wonderful, beautiful idea to take your time and allow somebody to get to know you instead of doing it from a place of insecurity and then thinking that somehow it's going to work out better if you just put everything on the table from the beginning. This is so important because the piece that we're missing is that ability to journey. We're always trying to get to that destination as women so fast, and it's really based on insecurities, trying to provide security for ourselves, trying to you know, prove that he likes us, all those things like that. I want you to just assume that he does. He's going to like you regardless. And it is okay to let him earn the opportunity to get to know those pieces of you and to do it over time instead of having to put it every, everything out on the table at the beginning. Again, it's a beautiful dance. Enjoy it. Enjoy the seductive and unwinding process of it all. Okay, next. First off, I have to say you're doing some really good things. You know, if you had one of the most amazing dates of your life, you said you've been working on boundaries. You said you've been, you know, mantraage dating for a couple of months. You're, this is a good sign that you are headed in the right direction. And I also love this phrase. I felt the most respected and feminine I have ever felt. Okay, here's the, here's the truth, ladies. This isn't just for you, miss. I want to fall in love again. We're sorely misunderstanding our femininity in this society. We as women are being taught to be good, productive women, and then we're over-sexualized on top of that. And to give us this really, as a smart, ambitious, successful woman, to give us this really fucked up notion of what it means to be feminine. And then, of course, we're trying to prove that we're capable of anything that a man is capable of. And the truth is that we are. We are capable of just about everything. Some of the things that w- the way that we approach things have to be different. But one of the most powerful things that you can do in your life is embrace your femininity. But we also have a very warped idea of what femininity is. And I want you and every, every woman to understand that that mantourage dating helps put you back in touch with it in a version that is an integrity with you, an aversion that allows you to breathe deeper and to show up more fully in life. And that's really important to understand. Femininity is not a, is not code for female helplessness or anything else like that. It's an energy of receiving and being desired and being good with all those different pieces of it and doing it in a way and learning how to do it in a way that makes you feel powerful, not disempowered, not frantic, not out of integrity with yourself. So I love that you are feeling respected and and feminine because even though we talk about, you know, how much we want to be seen as equals, we already are equals in many, many ways. And it's okay to not have to negate the fact that we want to feel special and respected and feminine at the same time. Okay, so your big question, 
Well, you had a few of them, but here. How do I know after two dates whether or not, even after two dates, how, do I, how can I know if he's a keeper? Okay, let's make this short and sweet. You can. Now, yes, do I concede as your romantic fairy godmama that there are women that just knew when they knew and they knew? Yes, that does happen. But it's not quite as frequent as, you think you, uh, as we think it is. And if you have a history of crap dating experiences, crap relationships, or meh, you know, all that, it's unlikely that you're jo- just going to know. Now, let me put a little spin on this for you because that's what I like to do as your romantic fairy godmama. The spin being, I believe... 100% the only way you can truly know if somebody's a keeper is how they consistently keep showing up. And sometimes that takes a while. It's not just based on how amazing you feel when you're around him. But here, here's the spin. You can also just step into the stance of, of course he wants me. Of course he's going to fall in love with me. Of course, he's going to have an amazing time with me. Of course, this amazing mindset that I want you to shift into as an adored woman, it's okay to step into that. What's not a great idea is to take a step back from actively participating in your mantraj. It's completely awesome to enjoy this moment and to really suck it in and, you know, as if it was this, this, the most gorgeous outfit or dress you have ever worn and wear it and look at yourself in the mirror and see how hot you look and all that good stuff. But remember, especially because you're writing me the day after one of the most amazing dates you've ever had, that it's truly important that you recognize that this is, this is an amazing moment. Now, it can build on more amazing moments and it can keep getting better, of course, but recognize it as a moment. Enjoy it for the moment. Don't go into the future planning of it all yet. Let him consistently show up over time to earn that spot in your head. Now, let's, let's also go back to the big factor here is that even though you started relationships at a very young age and you don't have a ton of experience, although you've already had a four-year marriage at the age of 22, by the way, most of the stuff that I'm saying right now, it can actually function for any age frame. So it's, this isn't just for 22-year-olds. But I, especially at this young age, even though you started everything quite young and you already have you know, a good bit of life experience under your belt, you need to embrace where you're at. So regardless if you are 22, regardless if you're 32, 42, 52, 62, 72, one of the things that you need to focus on is building your empire. Okay. Oh, really quick note. If you haven't done this already, I don't suggest you doing it. Do not introduce him yet to your children or child. Don't do that yet. If you have already, take some steps back from it until you guys actually make it into an exclusive relationship. That's really, really important. You were asking, how do I take things slow? What do I tell him? Should I say what I feel or hold back? I want to tie this back to the fact that regardless of your age right now, you need to focus on building what your empire is, your world is. All the th- I know you said you're killing it. I want you to make sure that you're getting to a financial place that you feel super stable, that you can support you and your children with no problem whatsoever so that you never go into a relationship, not that you are, but just making sure that you never go into a relationship as an adored woman feeling stuck because of finances or anything else like that. So build your empire. Keep working on your money as well. And then how do you take things slow? You take things slow by mantraj dating. You take things slow by saying if he asks you for a relationship, telling him you're not ready for that relationship yet. You take things slow by learning to address, enjoying those moments that we were just talking about and learning to address emotions as they come up that might run an interference on taking things slow. All the doubts that come up and also really stepping away from this notion that If I don't take advantage of this right now, it's going to disappear. That's one of the biggest loads of bullshit we feed ourselves as women. And sometimes we get fed by other people as well, but I think we do it more to ourselves than anything. 
This whole idea that a man is going to disappear forever and you're going to lose your one and only chance if you don't step on it right now and instead of exploring your romantic options and exploring who you are as an adored woman, that puts more pressure. That's about the same as, you know, here's, here's a good way to know whether or not you're ready to have sex with somebody. If you're ever worried about whether or not he's going to leave you if you don't have sex with him soon, you know right then you're not truly ready to have sex with him. Same thing. If you're worried that you're going to lose him because you don't want to get in a relationship with him, then you are not ready to get in a relationship with him. We get in relationships not because of pressure. We get into relationships because that's what we really want to do. And since you've already done the marriage thing anyway, anyway, and this is also great advice for my ladies who come to me who've been in 25-year marriage already, take your time. Explore your options. If one man will treat you this way, there's tons of other men that will as well. And what it's telling me is that when you have a date like this, is that you are shifting into the right actions and mindset and putting yourself in a place to truly learn how to be adored. Because learning how to be adored is a skill set. It is not something 90 Eight to 99% of women know how to do. And in fact, we're being taught so many things that's counterintuitive to knowing this that I would say most women just, they don't. They don't know how to do this. They have to learn how to do this. It is a, and it's one of the skill sets that will pay you over and over again throughout your lifetime. So you asked, how do I take things slow? You keep mantraj dating. Yeah. You also ask, what do I tell him? There's nothing to tell him. Just continue to date him. If he comes up, like my husband did, and says, you know, hey, do you want to be in a relationship? Tell him, you say, I'm really flattered, but I'm not ready quite yet. Should I say what I feel or hold back? Well, this is such a, a, you know, I don't necessarily think that you have to go and say, you know, I really like you. You can, of course, say I really like you. But I think sometimes when we start to hyper-focus on somebody because things are going really, really well, we all of a sudden misinterpret that as feelings of love our feelings for real love. And I don't, I don't think women really know if they're in love unless they have seen somebody show up consistently over time and those feelings towards them stay, stay consistent as well. So not only do you need to see him show up over time, you need to see yourself and your feelings about it and learning how to be adored again because a lot of the stuff, if he does it repeatedly, all of a sudden we're like, ugh, it's just so boring. We have to learn how to be good at receiving. And that's one of the beauty pieces of mantourage dating is that you get this opportunity to learn how to receive, but you're also getting great relationship training because you also learn to ride the hiccups. You learn how to receive more. You learn how to take one situation and create it and keep building on it. You learn how to um, be in a relationship and You learn how to ebb and flow in ways that are meaningful and impactful to both you and him. It it's it's a beautifully put together system, but you actually have to do it. Okay. And I suggest for longer than two months. I mean, that's always the thing. We're always trying to get these parameters around around things to know exactly what the perfect amount of time is. Well, that it's really woman specific. I can't tell you exactly for you. I will say, ladies, most of you, the majority of you don't need to be mantourage dating for any less than five to six months, okay? You really need to take this opportunity. Now, some people mantourage date and they they continuously mantourage date, but if you're going to spend, you know, 20, 40, 60 years with somebody, do the work up front. Do the training up front. Have all the amazing experiences up front so you learn how to build on those throughout a relationship. That way, you don't go into anything that is consistent of 10, 20, 30, 40 years and have any regrets. Because life isn't about regrets. Life is about taking the most out of this and becoming, having the most fulfilling experience and genuine experiences and just sucking every good thing you can out of life and being truly, truly happy. Now, not going to look perfect all the time by any means, but that doesn't mean you cannot be genuinely happy and that you cannot create these massive, incredible toe curling 
uh, just bodice ripping, staggering moments that you can have throughout a lifetime as well. But you do have to consider what you're doing to make that possible in your life, what kind of space you're actually creating, which is why mantraage dating, the lifestyle of mantraage dating is so imperative to creating that ongoing goodness and fulfillment and um, real excitement in your love life. Now, if you want to understand how the mantraage, because there's so many pieces that we miss when we, we really boil mantras dating down to just, oh, I'm dating more than one man at a time until I find my forever man or indefinitely if I so choose. It's actually way more complex than, than that. Some pieces are a little bit hard emotionally, mainly, and other pieces are actually quite simple, but the whole structure together is magical. So I put together a short video of how like all the different pieces of mantraage dating and that you need to know and that we teach in Secret Society of Adored Women. And if you want that access to that short video, you're going to go to Jen, J-E-N-N, Burton, B-U-R-T-O-N, dot com forward slash Secret Society so that I can explain more and you are no longer missing all of the pieces that you really need to make this experience extraordinary. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. When you fully embrace the magic of mantraage dating, you will not miss out on the man of your dreams, no matter what. This episode was brought to you by the Secret Society of Adored Women. Have you been tirelessly going on craptastic dates, having craptastic results with men, even spending a craptastic amount of time weeding through meh guys and fretting over the one who won't call you back or commit? Join us for our hush hush group of like minded, successful, badass single women from around the world turning the dating scene on its head and creating scandalously magical romantic experiences that you will cherish forevermore. But beware, your love life and life will never be the same again. Meet us over at thesecretsocietyofadoredwomen.com. Hey, lover girl, this is Jen again. Don't forget to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app, as well as share Single Smart Female with all of your single smart girlfriends. And if you would like to play around and learn more about mantourage dating, come see me at Single Smart female.com. Talk to you next time.